loves coffee. Good morning. I am teacher Denise. Welcome to those in the class and those viewing online. Thank you for joining us. I want to open us in prayer. Who wants to come up and open us up in prayer today? Janae, you raise your hand first. Come on up. Come open us up in prayer. Okay. All right, we're gonna bow our heads and we're gonna let Janae open us up in prayer. Father God, I thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. I pray that everyone will have a good day after church mm. and that everyone will be safe this year and that nothing will happen to everyone's family and that you will keep them safe and that um, we will have um, um, a good school a good school day tomorrow in Jesus name I pray amen amen, amen. beautiful prayer all right so our okay. lesson today our lesson today is going to be on Esther um, we're going to uh, for those of you at home, you're going to click the link in the email to watch the video and answer the questions for an opportunity to earn Bible bucks. Our memory verse for today is, can we all say it together? Be on your guard, stand firm, be courageous, be strong, Corinthians 13. Okay, we're going to say it one more time and we'll try to do it a little bit together, okay? Because we're all like, and we'll go slow, all right? So we're going to start again. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, and be strong. 1 Corinthians 16 13. Very good. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about today, you know me, I always have props for you guys because I'm a, I like to see stuff. I don't like to just imagine. I always got to have something here. So I went to Walmart. I don't have a swimming pool. Who has a swimming pool? Okay. Okay. Kind of. Kind of. Okay. So, <laughs> this is a, this is for a baby, but does anybody know what this is? Okay, TJ, tell me what this is. It's life float. It's a life float. It's a floaty. It's a floaty. Yes, it is a life float. Very good. Very good, TJ. So, uh, you you earned some Bible bucks for that today, don't you? So, yes. Yeah, so, so good, so this is a life flow. So um, we use this prop a lot um, to, re you know, it helps rescue people like when they are uh, swimming and some people that can't, sw who can swim? Okay, okay, somewhat, somewhat. Okay, so Israel, so Israel, so for me, I can swim, but when I'm out in the ocean, you know, if I'm on a boat and it's very deep, I'm going to have to have on a life vest. So we know that the life vest is to you is used for when we are in um, in water and we're in trouble, and it helps us stay afloat so we're not sinking down and, and that we're not going to um, be, you know, float. We're not going to end up going down into the ocean and not being able to come back. So can you imagine if you didn't have one of these on and you were in the water and you couldn't swim? TJ? A life vest. Yes, you would have to have a life vest on. So could you imagine a person that was in danger and they were out in the middle of the sea and they couldn't swim? And how, how, how do you think they would feel? Maya, how do you think they would feel if they didn't have one of these? Extremely scared. Extremely scared, yes. They would be extremely scared. Um, and, and if they were by themselves, they would feel kind of alone and scared and just not being able to, to um, you know, there'll be nobody there to help them. They're, they're crying out for help and there's nobody there to help them and they don't have the 
this dog to help them, right? So, um, but when we have, but when a person has a life vest, that means that they are safe. Yes, Izzy. There's also a bad thing with um, life vests and floating. One time I ended up floating over to the deep end at the beach. Mm -hmm. Mostly because I couldn't touch the floor or bring myself back, so my dad had to pull me back. Yeah, so it can, yeah, but you, but again, it, it is you, it has uh, material in it to help you float. You just have to, sometimes we can be our own worst enemy and we can try too hard and fight against what this is built to do. TJ. It can, well, yeah, but these have like foam in it, so it doesn't really pop. There, there are those that have that you blow air into it and those pop, but this one, I'll um, let you guys fill it after class, but this one doesn't have any air. So this one, you can poke a hole in it and it's not going to deflate at all. So when we think about that, um, when a person um, has this on, they're very safe. Um, they uh, sometimes this helps them keep keeps them from sinking sinking and it pulls them back to safety. So this is just think of this like God's protection around us. A lot of times we can get in situations where we're feeling scared and alone. When you're feeling scared and alone, we know that God is protecting us. How can we call on God? DJ. You pray. That's very good. Boy, you're going to catch all the Bible books this morning, huh? So, <laughs> you got to get as much as you can. That's right. So, um, we know that God's protection is, is very helpful. So, today we're going to learn about Esther. Esther uh, was uh, a Jewish woman. Um, she found herself in a scary position. She wasn't in the water, but she was in a scary position. And um, just like a, like a person that's out in the middle of the sea, she was very scared. And so, do you guys know about the story of Esther? Has anybody heard about Esther before? Yes, Janae. Um, she was kind of queen. And then one of the um, the king during her time, she was trying to kill all the Jews, mm -hmm. and one and her cousin was a Jew. Mm -hmm. So then one night she asked the king. Um, to kill the servant on top of the big, big um, tanker thingy, thingy. Yeah. And then, uh, then all the Jews were kind of saved. Yeah, so we're going to real that's a, that's a good synopsis of the story. Very good, Janae. So we're going to talk more about that. And we know that in this story, we see that Esther put her trust. Um, in God, just like we put our trust in this to help us when we're out the sea. But ultimately, God is in charge, even when we have this on. He's going to help us. So she had the courage to speak up, and um, her people, she and her people became safe. So we know that God will protect us for a lot of things. So you know me. I always got a lot of reading. So I'm going to need, like, Five people that can read very well. Okay. And you guys are going to need to come up here and read with me. Okay. Let's. Uh, Izzy, um, can you? Yeah. Come on up, Izzy. I'm going to scoot over. Okay, Miss Izzy, I want you to sit right here. Uh, Janae. I'm gonna put you as three. I'm gonna have somebody sit between the two of you. Um, TJ, I'm gonna have you sit in between. You're gonna be number two. Okay. Maya. Okay. Have you sit on the end over there. And then, Fold this in half. Uh, Miss Eden. I ran out of room. And then I'm running out of room here. 
we're gonna have so much. And then I guess, and, and yeah, then I'm gonna give you this one. Here you go, sweetheart. <laughs> I'm sorry, I tore that in. Okay, and then when we get to the end, I'm gonna have you come up and sit and read with me. How's that, Joseph? Oh, me? Yes, Joseph. At the end, okay, when we're getting close to the end, you're gonna read the very last piece for me, okay? Okay, don't forget. All right? Okay, so we're going to start off talking about Esther. And I want, I'm going to go ahead and have Izzy read, and then I will give the synopsis of what she read. So you want to go ahead and read for me and tell me what you have there uh, on Esther. We're talking about uh, Esther <coughs> chapter 1 through <coughs> chapter 2 through 17. So you guys got to read loud. Then the king's personal servants had a suggestion. They said, search for beautiful young virgins for the king. Mordecai. Mordecai had a cousin named... Had a son. Had a son called Esther. She was also called Esther? Esther. She didn't have a father or a mother, so Mordecai took care of her. Many young women were brought to the capital city. They were put under the care of... Hey guy, he liked Esther. She was his favorite. Esther didn't tell anyone she was a Jew. The king loved Esther more than any of the young young women, and she became his favorite. So King Xerxes put a crown on Esther's head and made her the new queen. So we're so what we read was in a in a far off land ruled by a king named Xerxes, a young Jewish woman named Esther lived there. She was an orphan raised by her cousin Mordecai. Now King Xerxes needed a new queen and guess who was chosen? Miss Esther, right? So Esther became the queen and she kept her Jewish faith as a secret. Now let's imagine if Esther's living in a, in a palace, <laughs> but keeping such a big secret. How do you think Esther might have felt if she's keeping that secret? Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, okay. Miss Edith? She felt like wanting to tell everyone. Wanting to tell everybody, okay, good. So, yes ma'am, go ahead. You want to be true to herself and tell people? Yes, okay, so I'm gonna have you go on back and we'll, we'll have everybody scoot on down. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Come on down, TJ. You're going to go. I'm going to call you at the end. You're going to go back to your seat. I'm going to call you at the end. Okay. So you want to read number, you want to read, uh, we're talking about Esther uh, chapter 3 through 1 through 6. So you want to read that for me? Yeah. Yes. After these things happened, King Exorus promoted him and, and gave him a place of honor more important than any of the other leaders. When Haman saw the Mordecai refused to bow down to him or gave him honor, he was very angry. Haman had learned that Mordecai was a Jew, but he was not satisfied to kill only Mordecai. He also wanted to find a way to destroy all of Mordecai's people. Easter 3, 1 dash 6, ever. Earth. Easy reader version. <laughs> ERV. <laughs> it's called easy reader version. So yes, yeah, so now what, what TJ just read now, here's where the story got so interesting. We saw that Esther was picked as the queen, but Esther's cousin Mordecai, um, he had discovered uh okay. Um I'm sorry, I'm probably out of place here, but um, what's, what happened was um, in the story, uh, Esther's cousin Mordecai discovered that there, uh, that there was gonna be a plot to just destroy the people. Okay, um, now when this, 
Here's where the story gets more interesting. Esther's cousin Mordecai discovered a plot to kill the king and was able to stop it. But there was also a man named Haman who did not like, think he did not like Mordecai because Mordecai refused to bow down to him. Haman was so angry that he planned to kill not just Mordecai, but all the Jewish people in the kingdom. So can you imagine how scary, how that terrible news was? What would you think, how do you, um, what do you think would, you would do if you were Mordecai or Esther and, and you found out everybody, this person didn't like you and he wanted to kill you and your entire family? Yes. I would feel terrified and go tell the king. You feel terrified and go tell the king. Anybody else have any other? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Yes, it's fine. I would feel worried. You would feel worried? Okay, you guys. Yeah. Yes, 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 Edith. Um, I'd feel um, like, like really sad and I'd feel prey. Very good. Yes, TJ, what would you do? I would catch a flight to Mexico and never come back. You would catch a flight to Mexico? And what about your family? You would just leave them, you leave your family here to, to, to hey, suffer? is always going to somehow or another I don't care if you move to another part of the country that problem is still going to be there so that problem will always be there so let's go on I think I somehow know I got a sequence but let's go ahead and read um let's read more what happened next mm, man to the king to destroy these people. Mordecai and, and um, encouraged Esther to go to the king and beg him for mercy for Mordecai and her people. Esther said, the king is, has one law. Whoever goes, goes to him without being being called that he that person must be put in the death on these to the the king holds out his gold scepter scepter to them and I will not I have not been called to go see the king for 30 days. Mm -hmm. If you kept quiet now, help help and free them the for all for the Jews and will come from the from another place. But you and your father family was all dead will die and who now who knows may you maybe you have been chosen to be the queen and suggested for such a time for such a time as this so what we found out as was when Esther heard about Haman's plan, she was terrified. But, but brave Mordecai reminded her that she might have been made queen for just a purpose as this one, to save her people. So Esther decided to go to the king, even though it was very risky. Imagine you're Esther, you're about to do something very brave, very scary. Do you think you can do that if you're scared? Do you, you can't? Nobody can think they can do that? No. No? It's not, sometimes it's not easy to be brave, um, but we know if you have faith, 
You know that you, you have faith that God is going to, to help you. He's going to, maybe he's going to change that person's heart to hear you. So, so let's read more about, um, let's keep reading on. Let's read more about what happened next. When the king saw the queen Esther, her, he asked, what is bothering you? What do you want from Wong? What do you want to ask me? I will give you anything you ask for, even half my kingdom, Esther said. I have prepared a party for you. And Haman, Haman started bragging about how rich he was, and he was bragging about how the king had pro promoted him higher than all the other leaders. Esther, Five to 11. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank you. Easy. That was good. So we know that um, in the story, um, Esther, the king saw that something was bothering Esther, but she was afraid to come and talk to him about it. But she kind of, so she prayed on it and she came up with an off with a plan. So Thank you so much, dear. Let's read out some of the, <laughs> let's read out what else happened. This sister rivalry, man, I love it. What happened next? That same night, the king could not sleep. So the servant read the book to the king. He read about the evil plan to kill the Xerxes. The king asked Haman a question. He said, Haman, what should be done for, the, for a man the king wants to honor? Her man thought to himself, I'm sure that the king is talking about honoring me. So Haman got the robe and the horse, and he put on the robe on Mordecai. Haman said, this is done for the man the king wants to honor. Very good. So we read that, um, we read that story about how the king couldn't sleep at all. He couldn't sleep at all, and he read the story about how Mordecai helped save his life. And so then he went and asked a question to Haman. Haman was thinking that it was all about him. Do you ever have those friends that they, all they think about is all about me all the time? Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah, a lot of friends like that, huh? I know. I know that. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, yeah, but sometimes it's, it's sometimes... God has to, sometimes God puts those people in your life for a reason. They're, they're there to give to, so you can learn to have patience. They're also there so you can sometimes see when you're not being all that. So, because sometimes we think, sometimes we think we're all that too, right? No. No? no. Because uh, my parents I say, I always think about others before myself. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, well, you're an exception because sometimes, I'll be honest, sometimes I think about me, but, but you know, I have to love on other people as well. So thank you so much. I appreciate that, young lady. Meow. Meow. Okay, come on, Joseph. Let's read the last part. Oops. Okay. I'll help you read that. So can you read that toward the page? Okay. Go on, Mr. Joseph. After that, Hamlin hurried home with his head covered because he was embarrassed of and shamed Esther 6, 1 through 12. Woo! Awesome. Woo! Thank, Thank you. you. All Good right. Job. Thank you, Woo! Joseph. So we learned that Esther bravely approached the king and invited him and Haman to a banquet. Then at the banquet, she revealed her Jewish identity and told the king about Haman's plan. The king was furious with Haman and ordered that he be punished. And the Jewish people were saved thanks to Esther's courage. Isn't it incredible how Esther's bravery and faith in God led to the salvation of her people? What did you all learn from Esther's story? Okay, Miss Edith's hand went up first and we'll go around. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes you have to be brave in order to do the right thing. Sometimes you have to be brave in order to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. TJ. Never keep. 
Never say that again. Never keep a bad secret. Never keep a bad secret. Very good. Miss Maya. Think of others before yourself. Think of others before yourself. Joseph. Sometimes you have to be brave. Okay, Izzy. Sometimes you introduce yourself to help others. Sometimes being true to yourself can help others. Can help others. Janae, did you have your hand up? What did you want to say? Be brave and be kind. And don't think about yourself first. And don't think about yourself first. Miss Nyla, did you have anything to say? Mm -hmm. Yes. You, you have to be brave to do something to help others. You have to be brave to do something for others. I think we all did very well. Um, so um, I think we... We pretty much did the questions, but we can talk about it again. Can anyone tell me why Queen Esther was scared to talk to the king? Okay, Janae, you had your name, your hand up for everyone, then we'll go to eat it. Okay, because um, she wasn't called on to, to talk to the king, and um, that, um, that all of the Jews and Mordecai were going to be killed. Yeah, she, so she was afraid because a king had a rule, like, you can't go to him. Like, you can come up and talk to me, but the king is kind of like the president. You got to make an appointment, because otherwise, if you try to go to him and you try to go past his secret service people, you will not get very far. So she was afraid. Yes, Miss Eden, what were you going to say? Oh, um, I was going to say that because she was Jewish and the um, king <coughs> that... All the Jewish people were going to get killed, and I think Esther's that. Yeah, yeah, I think that. Yeah, that's a that's a scary time. So, um, uh, can you think of a time when you were scared to do something, but you did it anyway? Does anybody have a story? Miss Eden, you got all the stories. Go ahead, darling. Um, I was scared to pick up a worm. You were scared to pick up a worm? Yeah. So did you you did it anyway? Yeah, because it was squirmy and it looked cute. Okay. okay. Yeah, All right, TJ, you what happened with you? When I was younger and I was afraid of ants, I was afraid to kill them. Uh huh. But I did it anyway. So, yeah, so we're talking about, okay, so let me, uh, let me ask you guys, have you ever been put in a situation? Yes, ma'am. Miss, go ahead. When I was a little girl, I broke something of my mom's. And everybody was getting in trouble because I wouldn't say I did it. But I felt so bad because everybody had restrictions, couldn't do yep. anything, but it was my fault. So I had to go and tell my mom, yes. I'm the one that broke your face. Oh. Yes. And so that was very hard for me because I didn't want to be in trouble. Of course. But unfortunately, I was in trouble already. <laughs> so, so does anybody have a story where, where they were in a bad situation, but you knew that you had to do something? Just like Miss Rose, she she didn't want to tell, but she did that. Or even, you know, a situation at school. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. We get, okay, we'll go ahead, Miss Miss Eden, and then we'll go back to, we'll go to. Um, okay. So at our school, there was something called no drugs or drug free. And um, girls and boys in the bathroom, they used to have like um, drugs and they used to drink it in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And then this is where um, sometimes when Miss Riona, the, our principal, and the police got involved, and someone was smoking in the bathroom, uh -huh. and then the um, and then it was um, someone that my friend's sister, and then she um, she just got detention. So how did that oh, affect yeah. you? Did you what, were you did you get did you say anything? Did you do anything? How, how did that affect you? Um, I was pretty scared because I'm like, no, I'm too cute to die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, if I go and okay. All right. Let's start, let's start the volume. Okay, Miss Janae. Wait, can you do this to me? I'm sorry? Can you do this to me? Yeah, I was asking. I know.
know, we all got thrown off. But can you think of a time when you were scared to do something, but you did it anyway? Why do you guys think it's important to be brave and to stand up for what is right? Why do you guys think it's important? If you see something happening to somebody, if you see a situation going on and you kind of get that kind of, um, you know, feel. that feeling in your stomach that, you know, it's not right what's happening. And, you know, you could see a friend being picked on at school. You can um, see a situation where somebody's stealing something in the store. Exactly. You, can, you know, you can see, you, we all are, we all witness certain things that happen. And sometimes we get that kind of urge in our stomach that is not right. And sometimes we, you know, some things we don't want to stand up for, but sometimes we, we, we're we being told, we're being led by God to stand up. So I would say, for all of us, we really want to, you know, we really want to do what's right. We want to be like Esther. Um, we don't want to get, we don't want to pack our bags and move to Mexico and leave our family. We want to kind of help as much as we can. Go ahead, Miss Tana. I have an example when I was in high school. There was, it was a small school, not like the big ones you guys go to here. My graduating class was only 54 people. Oh, but cool. we had a, I had a, we had a girl that was in, in um, class with us, and she had a problem with her foot, and she had to wear like one big shoe and one small one because of, of her foot problem. Well, she went in and had surgery, and they fixed the problem. But she continued to walk like this. Like so she began to walk she, all of her life. That's what she was used to. And some of my friends were getting kind of tough with her. Um, they were reminding her that she didn't have to walk like that anymore. And that because her foot was fixed, she could walk evenly. And, um, and she just kept walking the way she'd been walking all of her life, you know, 16 years, 15, 14, depending on when she started walking. And it bothered me. It bothered me a lot because I knew, I knew how hard that had to be for her. One thing, she's got to change her gait and change her walk. That's not easy to do. And then she's dealing with these people that are supposed to be her friends, giving her a hard time that she's not doing it right. 
And so I talked to them one time when she wasn't around, and I said, you know what? She's always walked that way. How does she change that habit overnight? And can we kindly remind her and, and try to help her rather than, you know, I almost felt like she was being bullied over it. And it bothered me at first that I didn't say anything. And afterwards, everybody, well, again, right. She, she hasn't ever walked normal, what we call normal. And so everybody started to be kind, kinder to her. And, and she got to doing better. But it's a, it may seem like a small thing, but it didn't seem like a small thing as I saw it through her eyes. It's a good story. So we're going to go back to our Bible, uh, our Bible verse, and then we're going to have somebody pray us out. So again, what's the Bible verse say? Be on your heart, stand firm in faith. Very good. So you guys all saw that. You guys saw this verse happen in Esther's story, correct? Yeah. Yes. So who wants to pray us out? That was quick. Come on up. Okay. Let's pray us out, Mr. Joseph. Father God, thank you for this day. I bless that we can have a good day at church. And everyone will, everyone will listen. Then, then we can participate in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, Amen. Thank you, Joseph. Appreciate that.